Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features that have been coming out like crazy over in command land. Now I just almost gotten to the point where after that tiny update was released that I can't keep on top of everything that's changed. Now, it's almost like we've gotten like an expansion or like a command two and a half or something like that. So what we're going to take a look at today is a couple of the features that I know that there's going to be some questions on and people have some clarifications. Unfortunately, no, I won't be doing any video about the operational planner. Uh, this by the way is really, really cool. It just needs a little a little bit more R&D in order to make this really, really, really work well. But the good news is there's ways to use this now that you can actually kind of uh, overlap and make it work even better for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I wanted to show you, though. So the first thing I wanted to share with you, which I thought was very, very, very interesting, is that uh, when we create missions, let's go ahead and uh, press the F11 key there and pop this up. You're going to notice that we have brand new buttons down here. Now, this is one of those like sneaky features that they just sort of stuck in there and I uh, didn't let anybody know about it. We also have this thing that says mark phase is satisfied upon reaching destination. Uh, this is very, very useful as well, and also knows RTB on that. These all go with the operations manager, but um, we're going to deal with that, I freaking promise, a different week because um, there's some stuff you're going to have that's going to make it a little tricky to use. Another thing that we got, which is fantastic, and again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, is at the end of missions now, when you deactivate, you can actually unassign the units, order them to return to base, and delete the mission itself. So why is that freaking incredible? Well, it's amazing because now you have the ability to create entire massive sets of mission, 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 mission. And when each mission aircraft is done, they can come back to base that deactivates the mission, activates them for the next mission that they could be going on. It's really, really cool. But the thing I wanted to show today is I wanted to show off the new ability to control the paths that aircraft take when they're on strike missions. So check this out. So what I have here is I've uh, taken my lovely home state here and I've made it a target. Now, one of my really, really good friends um, back at the New England Air Museum, when I used to work there for like, I kid you not, 10 years, uh, he was a B-52 navigator. And uh, what he actually would do is he'd sit there and he was a B-29 guy and then he became a B-52 guy kind of a thing. And he says, you can't tell me how many times I've blown up all the different major cities in the state that we lived in because he was always operating over here at Westover. And so uh, he gave me permission to blow things up in our own state. So let's do it. So I'm going to grab this real quick. Uh, sorry, Bradley, you, you become a target today. So I'll call this a uh, target boomer. That sounds good. Okay, boomer. Land strike. Oh, we're going to make sure it's active. There's this parent pool. Don't worry about that yet. We also have activation, deactivation. We can also, when we're done, we can unassign things. I'm going to press the OK button. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab, actually, I'm going to edit my target list here. No need to target runways. Don't waste your time. Uh, whoop, there's a whole other set of runways. Apparently, I can't see. Typical. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab some aircraft that are going to help me out for this. I have a couple different groups here. I have uh, these ones who have land-only standoff weapons, so GPU-38s. And I also have this crew over here that have these much, 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 much longer range. Uh, these are JSOWs, so these have a little bit of reach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the crew, both sets of these crews here, toss them into the mission. Notice, by the way, you can assign units for multiple missions now. Again, that when we talk about the operations planner in another video, we'll go into kind of how to make that work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here with flight size. I'm going to set the flight size 4. They recently fixed the bug on this one. And I'm going to scroll down here. I'm actually going to set engage until Winchester, because why not? And we have this brand new button down here that says attack method and it says split distance. Believe it or not, we've had this for a long time. We've only recently been able to use it in the consumer version. So we have two different problems we have to solve here. The first one is, what are we going to do as far as our attack goes? And the second one is, how far apart are we when we do our break off? So if you do formation single aim, this is when everybody queues up in a conga line with bam, 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 on whatever target gets in the way. Now, if we come in here and we set it to independent aim, now what we're going to do is order the formation to break up when they get to the target and pick something independent and just do your own little targeting. Don't all attack the same thing at the same time. Uh, that's wonderful and awesome. So one of the ways I recommend experimenting with this when you're first trying to make it work for you is if you come down here with the create or edit flight plans button, if you bop that button, what it will do is it'll quickly generate the flight plan so you can see visually what's going on here. So you can see very, very clearly that this particular aircraft here is going to be doing one of those. Let me grab one of my Ds here. Uh, the nice thing about the Ds, by the way, is the fact that they're going to be the ones that are going to drop it off. So now notice with formation, independent aim, they kind of do one of those things. If I do formation, single aim, I'm updating all the flight plans. Notice everything stays the same. This is what you're already familiar with. Where it changes is we have this thing called split at action point, and we have echelon at action point. Each one of these different methods has a slightly different personality. And we'll take a look at both of them individually. The first one is split at action point using time deconfliction independent targeting. What? Let me show you. It looks a little bit like this. 
So as you can see, everything looks pretty much the same. We don't have any extreme changes here because of the fact that we're not doing anything weird. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come down here. We have echelon at action point using time confliction, run that one again. And again, you can see everything seems to be roughly the same. You know, we're not seeing anything uh, extreme or weird or pretty much anything that we can see. Obviously keep in mind, we have two different types of weapons that we're using here, which tends to conflict things. And you can see everything is basically stayed what you're used to at this point. Now, Watch what happens when we enable multi-axis simultaneous attacks. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a multi-axis uh, um, stacked time of attack. Echelon attack. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot to say. Press the button, create or update. Whoa, things just changed a teeny tiny bit. So what we've done now is we've asked them to attack the target using an off-axis attack. And we've asked them to go ahead and attack an echelon, which is what's going to basically create this kind of arc that they're going to be operating out of here. And you can see all the individual weapon launch points kind of all spread out like that. Now, we have different timing options. And we have a 20 second, a 30 second, and a 40 second. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, if you take a look at the 20 second, as you see how everybody's a little bit closer together. If we do the 40 second, notice everybody spreads out. So in essence, your time here is what's going to be dictating the width of your attack that you're going to be utilizing. Now, if we switch this to split attack instead of echelon attack, create that uh, flight plan there, you're going to see that it's going to create themselves this one point where everybody's going to go do their own thing and attack and kind of come back around and they're all kind of come swinging back in and go ahead and land as well. Keep in mind, we have aircraft with different weapon types here, which complicates this. But you can see the weapon launches now are all coming off with these really, really far out, then turn in kind of a thing versus just going and spreading, kind of doing your thing and then breaking back apart, basically making it more difficult for interceptors to be able to engage you because you're going so much far off the original axis of our attack that we have here. Now, the interesting one here is we have these things called trail attacks. Now, the nice thing about a trail attack is it's going to look a little boring, is the fact that everybody's going to launch at the same time targeting different targets. Now, that's awesome. And it's also very, very similar to what we had up here with these two as well. Now, of course, the one everybody's most curious about is this thing that's banana split. Now, I did a little bit of research to try to find out what the deal with the banana split is. When you run it, you get something that looks like this. So the banana split is basically going to be an attack where you're going to be hitting from one axis and you're basically going to stay away from the target. Notice we have a huge right turn beaming the target. Then everybody turns, fires, turns around and runs. So in essence, this whole banana split sort of move here, this is about 20 nautical miles, by the way, enables you to basically absorb and keep an eye on the target, then turn and drop your munitions and then get the heck out as fast as you can. Keep in mind, we need to have multiple flights. Unfortunately, we can't change the split distance yet. So otherwise, we could take this point, move it a little bit further, a little bit closer. So we have all of our aircraft ready to go. One of the questions you're probably going to ask is, does it work? Um, yes, and not only does it work, but we also have this magical time on target capability ability, which makes it even more powerful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. Uh, let's see here, 12.30 hour uh, Zulu time, that would be uh, 10.30, 11.30. Uh, we'll go ahead and call it a 12 o'clock here, Zulu. Boop, 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 boop. Let's see, that's going to be 10.30. No, no, what am I doing? I'll do, uh, let's see, well, one hour from now would be 10.30. We'll do 11 Zulu time. I got to remember this is pretty early in the morning. So now notice you're going to get a little woo as all these things update. And the other thing you're going to do too is now you're going to get the holding pattern that's going to exist down here. So we want to go ahead and test this out. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a little bit of an escort to help us out because um, I know <laughs> this is... A very complicated mission that I've been playing with uh, quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and get some cap going on here. Cool. I wanted cap. And this is one of the interesting things here. So we'll set this to patrol. AAW. That looks pretty good to me. Eh, don't worry about that. You're going to see stuff like that once in a while. So we're going to grab all the Cs. We're going to go toss them into the cap. Uh, how many targets would you like to be on station at one time? Um, Let's see here. I have 12. So uh, let's see here. We're going to uh, eh, forget it. We're just going to launch them all. Groups of six. Why not? That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, the takeoff time, we're going to go ahead and try to get them a little bit before our strikers there. 10 o'clock is probably a pretty good takeoff time. That's going to give these guys a little bit of time to circulate anyway. So then what we'll do is go ahead and set up our seed as well, because, you know, seed. Let's see, seed. We're going to do a patrol. We're going to do a seed patrol and press OK there. Eh, I'm not going to worry about that. Nothing bad is going to happen. Don't worry. Nothing bad will happen. So we have seed. We're going to grab our growlers and toss them into the group here. Um, we're not going to do any of this one-third business, but we are going to send them out in groups of four. So let's see here. The cap takes off at 10 o'clock. Uh, the seed is going to go ahead and take off at 10.10 uh, 10 here, just a little bit later. And then our target boomers, um, their time on target is going to actually be 11 o'clock. So they're going to have to take off sometime during that sort of interval like that. So let's go ahead and hit spacebar. Speed of time a little bit. Whee! 
and people start getting airborne and of course you know exactly how the story goes let's go ahead and slow things down now one thing i love already in this particular version is we now have the air tasking order so at any moment i can pop this open and i can take a look and go let's see the aew is doing his thing uh cap everybody's uh, getting ready i can scroll to the right here i can see exactly where they're taking off i can see the objective time it looks like they're going to be taking off at this particular time this is local by the way so they're going to be getting airborne about 10 18 or so so nothing too too bad meanwhile all my these guys are on their way kind of heading directly towards their target which is kind of what i was hoping because this is a pretty we're, we're gonna lose some airplanes here like i have no doubt in my mind oh by the way uh if you look up top you'll notice we now have a new time acceleration we have double fire which is awesome it gives you this like bizarre like five second thing unless there are missiles in the air in which case it unsettles down to a much more uh, normal speed is kind of what i'm going to say here all right you're supposed to be getting me air superiority here you guys are getting wrecked come on give me some air superiority give me some of that mean air superiority Oh yeah, bring me some air superiority. So because they've changed the missile model so much, all battles now seem to take place like they basically fire and run, fire and run, fire and run. Like that's that's like everything now. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I played an awful lot of DCS in my day. And I can tell you the only people you shoot down are the ones that didn't know you were there. You don't shoot them down because, you know, you engage in these like vicious dogfights. You basically run each other out of fuel and missiles. Oh, speaking of out of fuel and missiles, it looks like our, our bunch of our career you guys got wrecked. But look at that, right on schedule. Look at this. All these guys have taken off, and uh, they, remember, they're supposed to be on the target at about 11 o'clock. I pinky promise uh, none of those friendlies are friendlies. So now notice, ooh, look at this. This is the one group for the long range. This is for the brooches. This group here is for the regular JDAMs. So we're going to get into range here. Everybody's going to start firing uh, all sorts of interceptor weapons here. Oh, here they come. Whoa, whoa. Well, they're the best laid plans, right? Unfortunately, we're never going to get into range because those uh, pesky Ruskies are just going to start dumping stuff on us. Oh, they're trying to shoot down the uh, missiles there. That's a great system there. And meanwhile, the other crew is uh, still flying towards their targets here. Now, it would be really, really, really nice if these guys would like help out now that uh, they've kind of done the thing. Oh, surprise! <laughs> and then, of course, we have this crew, which uh, just did their banana split there. Again, they popped out, they came back around, and now they're kind of splitting, uh, running back as fast as they can to this position, and they're going to do this little, like, what are you... <laughs> um, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, guys, hold on. We have a flanker that seems to be being chased down. Would you be so kind as to uh, inconvenience it a little, just a little bit? There it goes. Aha, didn't expect... Boom. <laughs> Now, I have no idea why they didn't do that, because I'm pretty confident I did my job here. All right, so everybody's going to finish up their little flight plan. They're going to get the heck out of there. They're going to land on the ground. Or, well, actually, I mean, well, the mo mobile ground there, because it's an aircraft carrier. So let's go take a look at losses and expenditures, and uh, let's see kind of what happened here. So from what you saw, uh, you noticed everybody did the thing. They did the drop and immediately broke off and did this, like, run, this crazy sprint to safety, and then they kind of took back cover. Uh, let's see, we got a bunch of hangers. Uh, we got a couple of these. Uh, boop, boop. <laughs> The terminal needs to be redone anyway. Oh, uh, let's see here. IL-78. We got some Hokums. Uh, we got a good stuff. Uh, the stupid SA-10 and SA-11 was uh, making our lives a little miserable here. Uh, they went through a ton of ammo, including ooh, only 20 of those. It makes me feel better. Uh, they lost a lot. And here's the worst part. I guarantee you we lost seven F-18s. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eh, not bad. Not bad. We didn't lose any of the Growlers, but that's exactly what happens. Now, here's a fun fact. Um, go look up how much one of these AIM-120Ds cost, and then look at how many I just expended for not a lot. So anyway, uh, hopefully that video helps you out as far as planning these out. I think these are really, really a lot of fun to play with now, and I love some of the new features, but again, those are all going to be videos a little bit later in the future. And it'll be very interesting to see uh, just how many of these people... I love this new double fire mode. Look at how fast it is. Isn't that awesome? That's so much faster than it used to be. And then, of course, we can come in here and we can, you know, pre-program, you know, how much they're going to be doing for the next one. We can set them up for a separate land strike. But like I said, that'll probably be for a video for next week. Other than that, enjoy.